Hi, today we're talking about how to feel safe and trusting in, within intimacy. And this is a topic um, really based in complex PTSD recovery. And so we're going to dive in today. I'm Rachel McLeod. I'm a mental therapist, a coach, and a, ment a therapist mentor. And I specialize in helping people do the work, the brain work for resolving symptoms of anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress. And so the brain has a beautiful process for this. And I we really help people walk their brain through this process. This process does get stuck. Uh, and uh, can create all these problems that we know as complex PTSD um, and disorders of anxiety and depression. And so <clears throat> we want the brain to resolve these. When the brain does, it's quick and it's lasting, it's deep, and it's so deeply reparative that you actually just get to be yourself, reach your goals, and really transform the way you do your life. And um, your brain's job is to make sure you do your life with authenticity and really in a customized way to you. But if this process is blocked, it's not gonna do that. And so that's really the standpoint that I am approaching this. I am really in the nitty gritty of rewiring, um, reprogramming, um, and, and supporting the brain to do that work that it's designed to do. And, um, and so that's what we're gonna talk about. This is, not, this is gonna be a little bit of philosophicals, but it's really about creating the repair, the neurological rewiring. And so, <clears throat> and getting the brain to do that for you, which is really what it needs to be doing. You do not wanna fight with your brain. It's a losing battle. And, um, and it's exhausting and it doesn't work. And then you end up mad at yourself and dysfunctional and boo. Okay. None of that. So we want to, we want to be working with that. So, and so we're diving in from there. We're dry diving in to the concept of intimacy, feeling safe and trusting in intimacy. This is really challenging for people with developmental trauma, um, relationship trauma in early childhood, and lots of um, other traumas that have occurred because the brain has stayed so much in survival modes that it really hasn't built the thriving things yet. It hasn't built what it needed to thrive because it was so focused on surviving. And so um, that's what we're up against. And so this is a complex issue. And so I'm gonna take you through the layers and then we'll get right on the topic of um, right where we want the brain to work and create the change. And so, um, so, Okay, let's talk about this problem first. People with complex PTSD, early these early traumas in relationships and childhood and um, really uh, have a difficulty feeling safe, feeling, uh, um, they'll feel, they'll experience, we <laughs> will experience symptoms of, we'll notice shutdown, we'll notice defensiveness, we'll notice that we're anxious, worried, um, we're maybe overstimulated in intimate moments. We're um, on edge. Some of us become really aggressive. Um, some of us passive. Um, and, and any number of the things, right? There, any combination. Uh, usually we'll have our own specific combinations and that can evolve with time if, if our brain is processing. Um, but that's really what we're working with. So, um, so imagine you're having a deep conversation. You're um, you're intimate with with your with your romantic partner, um, talking about maybe a challenge, or maybe this is during intimate um, romantic moments. Maybe this is just intimacy in challenges, problem solving, right? Anywhere intimacy takes place, which I like the definition into me see because it's really the problem that we're facing with complex PTSD because we, when we're in survival mode and we're in environments of survival mode, there's not a lot of people looking into me, right? And so we don't, we don't have a practice with that happening, number one. So that's, we're not really wired for people to look into us, especially if we've had parents that were more overloaded and avoidant and had mental illnesses of their own or parents who never had experiences of people looking into them safely, right? And so they wouldn't really even know that that's a thing, so they wouldn't be doing it to us as children. And also, there's also times when people have looked into us and it's not safe. Maybe um, that caregiver was, was critical. Um, maybe that, um, and, or maybe that caregiver was shaming, right? And so we, we have this, these early experiences where 
it's not safe to be seen. It's not safe. If, if somebody sees me in a mistake, if they see me vulnerable, if they see me weak, it's going to be bad. And so, um, so that fast forward into adulthood with that issue not resolved, our brain still thinks it's not safe. It still thinks we can't trust anybody. And we've had countless experiences where this has been reinforced by this point. Um, gosh, I want to just, there's so many layers here. Stay with me. Um, when to be, to be intimate well, we really need safety. We need security and stability. And now because a lot of our uh, these this stuff occurred in early childhood when the other person was supposed to create our safety our security and our stability we in adulthood that feeling lingers and we really feel that somebody else should make this for us and um and the truth is it's not at that time has passed that um that time where somebody makes us feel safe and secure it has has really passed they, they can contribute to our safety, but they can't do the wiring uh, and the, the neurological wiring to help us feel safe and secure like what would have happened in childhood. We were designed for that. We were open for that neurologically. Now we're not. And so it's really confusing because we're like, make me feel safe, make me feel secure. And there are things that people can do to help with that. But um, the deep feelings of security and safety is a product your brain makes for you. And so really we need the brain doing that. Now, What's really challenging about this is that, oh, let me tell you one more thing. <laughs> let me tell you one more thing before I go into that. Um, everything we do, especially as adults, is, is we are doing it because of programming, because of neurological programming. Some of that programming, the majority of that programming is subconscious programming, which means it's, it's running below your level of awareness. It's a, below your level of consciousness. It's happening. It's underneath so deep that you're not really conscious of it, but it is absolutely running. Um, these programs are made, um, these sub, the brain makes subconscious programming from experiences, from emotions, feelings, um, uh, somatic sensations, the body sensations. Um, and it, it, it really wires these things together so that we can get faster and faster and faster at things. That does not mean we're getting better and better and better at things. Um, we actually need to involve the top of the brain to the to do their features to make these things better and better and better. But regardless of whether that's happening, that higher level uh, reasoning and, and, and elevation and in function and wellness is happening or not, we, our brain still is going to make things faster and faster and faster and faster. And that's why we can have our triggers can be faster. We can be more oversensitive, more reactive, more and more reactive because we're just getting better. Right, we're getting better at being reactive, um, and we're not getting better. We're getting faster. We're just getting faster at being reactive, and so, um, but we want to get better and faster, right? So, uh, we're going to talk about that in a moment. But the subconscious programming for intimacy, for our intimacy. Okay, I'm about to drop it, but I see. I need to go back one more time. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't think I can, my brain showed me the way and I lost it. So, okay. Um, at translating this to you all from um, just, I just do it, right? I help the brain do it. Uh, and it's so easy to do. It's not as complicated as it is to explain. Explaining is way but diff more difficult than getting the brain to, to do intimacy well. But I'm trying, uh, here we go. I'm trying to translate this. So I think I'm just going to drop this here and then we'll go back and add in as we need it. Okay. So, the challenge with intimacy and uh, in our intimacy programs, I got it. Okay, so we also practice intimacy. Our intimacy programs are only practiced with intimate partners. They're not the same. Um, at, they're not the same programming as what we have at work or what we have in our sports and in our workouts and in our, our friendships. Even um, these are not the same. Uh, our brain does not look at these relationships the same way as it looks at our intimate partnership. And so we only we're working on these with our intimate partner. And that means that they don't get as much practice as the rest of them. And uh, these are so painful that we can create so much problems in intimacy that it's so hard to resolve intimacy programs because um, and resolve intimacy challenges because there's so much pain here. 
and um, and so and that pain has to get processed and you know the brain the part of the brain that that decides whether we're going to heal or whether we're going to process it and, and, and okay whether we're going to um, survive or we're gonna go ahead and heal and um, and upgrade our programming and uh, create safety, internal safety, uh, whether we're going to do those higher end processes, that one is determining whether or not there's pain here, right? And so we're talking about uh, intimacy issues because of early childhood trauma. It's not really working very well. It's full of pain. We actually need to run those through the processor and get them to the hot other parts of the brain um, that upgrade them and resolve them and transform the pain into health and wellness and data and um, accuracy and those sorts of things, right? And so, um, but because they're so painful, they have such a hard time making it through and we don't practice them as much. And it's in a, such an important human need place. We have such a big need for intimacy that, uh, it's all on the line there, right? So the, we're, it's so easy to be in a survival state and shut down the healing process in this moment that a lot of times the programming just does not get upgraded. Okay. Now. The deal with um, your programming and why this is so different than the other programs is because these programs are built by your caregivers in the ages of zero to three. And perhaps even, I'm gonna extend that to zero to seven, but a lot of this stuff is happening in those early moments, those are zero to four, zero to five. A lot of this, the the trauma is nonverbal. It's pre-verbal experiences that you've had. And so that's that's a lot of what makes this challenge such a big challenge because it's not obvious. Like um, if you were to be at work and you had an experience with a car crash and you had a lot of uh, object drop and you hear that sensation and you go into a trigger state, you're, you're, you would likely, your brain would bring that um, that flashback up and you'd see the scene of the car, you'd feel the, and you'd know that you felt this way with the car. When we're talking about pre-verbal stuff, our brain isn't making, holding memories in the same way, but the memories are still here and they're influencing our intimate relationships. Because when we're in the moment, like we're adults, right? Um, brain function, your brain is going um, back to your past and we want it to go to the stuff that has been already processed, but that's not always how it works, especially if we're early in the healing journey. Uh, our brain will go back to our past to understand what's going on in the moment, right? And so with intimacy, uh, it's all of that stuff was built in those early time frames. Now, what's also problematic about that is if you were raised with people who were abusive, neglectful, or had their own complex PTSD, had terrible subconscious programming for intimacy, that's what you are given. That's what you are working with. Whether you like that or not, that's what's happening here. And so you're, you've, you're educated, perhaps you have studied, you have learned, um, you have practiced all these things and you still don't feel safe and you don't feel um, trusting in intimate situations. And so, and that's frustrating because you're like, I've done all the work, this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any logical sense, but it makes total brain sense. Um, how brains work and how they function, how they make your safety and your trust come from early memories the, and like the, the studies say that it's up to 80% of what's happening in the moment is, is, is really old stuff from that time frame. Now, and so that's a big influencer. So the greatest place to make your, your transformation with your, how you're tolerating infancy and intimacy is infancy <laughs> is going back from to zero to seven zero that time frame and it really it's going to be those earlier times zero to four and right and that's that's it for me to walk somebody through that process they have to have quite a bit of skill because we're looking for something that is not similar to our adult brain and our adult way of understanding things we have to really dive deep into the subconscious programming. It's simple strategies. I teach I teach people these all the time, um, but we but it's different. And if you if it's hard to trust the process because we're working with a different part of the brain, because so it's a little wonky, um, and um, and it's it's it's. But let me tell you what you get some of those things resolved, and you start noticing safety and trusting showing up in your intimate situations. You start noticing that you're less reactive. 
you're less demanding, you're less controlling, you're less, you're shutting down less, you're just more open, you feel more safe and calm. And this is a wild thing to experience, especially when you have chased your partner down to just say it like this. If you'll just say it like this, I could calm down. If you'll just tell me what's happening next, if you just give me all this reassurance while you're talking to me, I could calm down. And it is wild to go back and do some of this early childhood stuff spend 10 20 30 minutes there and notice that in the present moment when you are intimate with your partner you are doing better you're, you're not shutting down as quickly you're able to tolerate more you're seeing more nuances uh and, and there's tons of transformation in there and all of a sudden your, your partner is feeling safer because you're safer your partner is feeling more relaxed because you're more relaxed. Things are working better. You guys actually, when you are distressed, you don't have as much access to your higher level reasoning. Um, seeing things from multiple, pers multiple perspectives, um, your values, your morals, um, uh, the good aspects, right? When we go into that limbic state, it's all or nothing, right? We can't remember the good things about our partner because we feel so under attack. That's a brain state. Right. And so if we can feel more calm in this state, we're going to have access to all of our brain. We're going to be able to see things more clearly, more accurately, more safely. And we're going to be able to and we and the more you do, the more of this early childhood um, uh, processing that you do the more that's going to take place. And now not only are we building your safety, but we're building rebuilding. Excuse me. Um, not only are we building your safety, but we're also building your stability and your 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 security and over time you become very stable and over time i mean we're talking uh i i people notice transformation within one session but to to really build the whole thing um the it just have consistency and um and stability that is really like kind of three sessions, three, three, three childhood issues. And then, and then it's, you'll notice a more stable situation. And then you'll notice that there's more that needs to be built. So you're going to go back and you're going to grab three more. And there's ways to find that stuff. The body, the mind, I use the mind body connection to find that stuff. And, um, and it's, it's always playing out in your reality right now. Um, if you go with your intimate partner right now and you get into one of your traditional shutdowns or fights or squabbles, you will find the early material right there in the moment for me in plain sight. Like, so when people talk to me about these things, I'm seeing it right there. I will take that information. We'll use the body to bring up the early memories and we'll process that. Now, um, one of the complex things about this is this stuff in the early childhood state is incredibly massively painful um, I do not take beginners down this route um, their brain has to pull me down this route in order for me to go down that route with them because I do not know if they can handle the pain that's in there we're talking about and then you act like you feel like that small child it, uh, grown men grown women constantly crying when they hit this stuff because it's it, that's what we were doing in that place we were crying or we were holding back tears or we were dissociating from our tears or, and our the pain uh, i have gone back to these places and it, when i have done this i am rocking and crying uh and my arms are tingling it's a whole thing which i actually like because it doesn't last long it's like maybe three minutes but it, it's like everything's coming apart um i have to know if somebody can withstand that and so this is, these are goals, but there's a, when, when somebody begins their healing journey, there's so much, um, we work and I start people in the present. And so we're already working on that stuff, even though they're not consciously aware that this is what they're working on. That's what they're working on. And so, but they're, but we're doing it from the adult space, the adult mind. And so we can't get as awesome as we can from this place, but we can create quite a lot of transformation in that. Um, and then we, we keep backing it back, but I have found as I've worked with people and just over my career, uh, the majority of work that will take place is, is adult to age four. And that really cleans up people's lives. It helps them reach their goals. It helps them start painting again, drawing again, um, going back to school, all these things that they wanted to be able to do. Now they have the drive and the energy to do that. And so that space is really how you clean up your life. And when we're going for that intimacy, when we want to repair um, intimacy, then and that that deep relationship and connection with their romantic partner, that's zero to four. 
right? And, and most people come with a host of other things that we can resolve in those other ones. But when it's time uh, to, to do that work and, and by the time anybody that starts with me doing the pre the zero to the, the present to, uh, four, and it's usually five, six, seven on, um, a couple of people will start accessing stuff earlier, but, um, oh, what was I going to say? zero to seven no um uh, so oh that that will greatly improve their their romantic relationship anyway um that will help them be more stable more secure but we want to get all we want to and you okay this is what you never do you with with intimacy it's a it's an infinite area of expansion um and so but we want to create enough inroads to safety and wellness that you really can carve out um, more and more safety and stability and because brains like to grow they're like oh let's be more intimate you know i feel so secure with this person and i feel like i could take the risk and let's go but really when we carve into that other area we're still pulling from zero to four and then that's when more issues likely are going to surface and so and then we we process that stuff through because by now you are like expert level uh, a lot of my clients when they're doing this they don't even need to check back in with me to do this um they'll just do it because i've taught them to do it um and then all of a sudden they have a new comfort zone level in that new level of intimacy, right? And they know that when they're going into a new level, they're not going to be very comfortable and there's strategies for that. And so they're building their subconscious programming for carving out more and more and more intimacy and more safety and more trust. Uh, trust and safety are absolutely inside jobs. Um, and you know, there are times, um, caveats, um, there are times in abusive relationships where it really is an outside job first. Um, but when we're getting in here and we're working on the intimacy programs, that is an inside job, that safety, that, in, that security, um, that wellness, that, um, safety, I don't know, missing word security. I'm, I'm repeating myself, uh, but there's a word in there. I want to say, um, that's an inside job. That's the work we want your brain to do. Right. And you can do this, whether your partner is also dealing with complex PTSD. When I'm doing couples work, this is what I'm doing with them. Um, and there's individual work and then there's together work that we do and that, that, so, um, that's really the deal and so it's 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 a complex way of looking at it but really when we do the healing work it's very simple it does that does not mean it's easy um it can be very easy usually by the time people are here they're very comfortable with how their brain resolves issues confronting holding pain things like that we're starting that right away in the way i teach people so um which i want to invite you to work with your brain like this and i want to invite you to try three of my favorite interventions that really focus on that part of the brain that decides if we're going to heal or if we're going to survive mode. Right. Um, and it's a very, it's a different part of the brain. And so the strategies for working with that part of the brain are very different. And so, but I teach three of my favorites. They take about 30 seconds or to two minutes to jump into, to, to work. And so, um, and you'll notice if they're working because after when that sh brain shifts over from fight, from survive to heal and process, rest and digest the experience, um, there's, there's measurable things you'll see your brain and mind doing and even your body. And so I teach, I have a little video in that free program I offered showing you those things so that you can pick the intervention that helps your brain accomplish this task of switching over. And that's what we're influencing. Um, that program is called Interventions for Inner World Transformation. It's free. You can, I've added it into the description part of this video the video and um and if you want me if you want to follow my process that i walk my clients through a call it that program's called inner world transformation if you get an intervention that works for you and you want to use that that thing to do your healing work that intervention to do that healing work then um this program is really ideal for you because it, i'm going to walk you through the roadmap i walk all of my clients through um and if you that's available um that link there will take you to a page where it explains that program and you can sign up and get started and if you want me to walk you through the process personally i'm also available for that you can look on my website for more details and wonderful connecting with you and um I see that there's a comment. I'm going to address that later in, in, in the comments so you can look at that. Um, I go live in my Facebook group because honestly, that's the only technology I know how to work. <laughs> so 
<laughs> so if you want to see the question, you can look at my Facebook page, um, Rachel McLeod LCSW, and um, but I'm going to address that in the comments this time. So wonderful connecting with you. Take care.